Hello, still spinning podcast 48. What is good? Your boy Steven Selly here. Today I had my boy on John Evans, who is a passionate jump expert. I've talked to him a bunch. We talked about jump training over and over again. And I knew I had to have him on the podcast just because our conversations are so good. So I'm super excited to share this with you guys. We talked about knee pain. We talked about jump mechanics and technique. And what I really like about talking with John is that he really helps me understand the why of why things are happening. For example, in jump technique, the exact mechanics and the physics behind planting your feet and the way your body moves through the motion and knee pain, uh, what causes the tendon pain and how to rehab it and why the rehab works and things like that. And that helps me understand what I'm doing in training and what's going on to just get down to every detail of jump training. And I love learning from him and it's just always a great conversation so i'm super excited to have him on the podcast and i'm just super honored to have a platform like this where i could bring the information to you guys and everybody listening because when i was trying to dunk train or start my dunk journey i didn't have information like this so now it's just really cool to be the one in the position to talk and have these conversations and help others share their story and i'm really excited for john and his career because He's going back to school for uh, learning how to train and physical, I don't know, he'll explain it, but you get what I'm saying. He's just super passionate about the whole industry of sports science, and it's just so cool to see him grow and work together, and he's taught me so much. I just want to show everybody how much knowledge he has, so I know you guys will enjoy. So Still Spinning Podcast, where we talk about everything under the friggin' sun actually beyond the sun, everything in the universe from manifestation to the energy waves to feeling your skin, anything, boy. And it's also kind of slash the Dunk Life podcast because we talk a lot about dunking and training and everything vertical jumping. So I'm just having so much fun with these conversations. I have a lot more guests lined up. That's why it's not just every Tuesday. I've been having two or three a week, but I'm going to keep it up. It's so much fun, but at least every Tuesday. So If you guys really get any value out of this at all, anything from my YouTube channel, all I ask is that you just throw me a like, throw me a yo in the comments. I'll definitely respond. I respond to everything. But anything you can do that doesn't cost you money, I really appreciate it. Throw me a follow. uh, uh, Share share any of these podcasts. Share any videos. That helps me out so much, and I really appreciate that. And I'm trying to make my dreams come true. Of providing this content as my living i have all my goals in another podcast if you're interested but anyway that is it i really appreciate all the love you guys have been giving me and on to the episode john evans where you at boy i just gotta work and you know i'm doing that never stop never stop always on the track in the path never getting off track whatever i lack add it to my bag and i got plenty more when that came from and my price is right i never change bro i don't get it done get it done right and that's every day that's done Okay, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. And we're live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's up, my boy? John Hello. here with John Evans, the homie. What's good, man? Oh, dude, you know, just just changing my whole life. It's For it's my It's really nice. First nothing. podcast, by the way. First podcast. First podcast. Yes. First first t- YouTube uh debut. St- st- yeah, debut. Ooh. Debut. YouTube debut. You, yeah. Well, by the way, welcome was, subscribers. <laughs> yes, you're you're starting the YouTube channel though, right? I am starting a YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, so I have to do that as soon as possible. I basically haven't had time because I've been applying for classes and figuring out where I'm going to go to school, trying to find like work as soon as possible so that I can like pay for classes and pay for the other stuff while I do the other stuff. Yeah. You know, it's it's my. That's a perfect. It's mine. <laughs> That's a, that was exactly what I wanted to ask you too. Is what could you for the people? Because I know I know what your YouTube's about, but what would you say your YouTube's going to be about? Uh, so I think it's going to be an extension of basically what I've been doing on Instagram. So if you do follow me on Instagram, John six three six five, all the links you below. Probably, I don't even put it all on the, the links video below. There. All the links in the description. Uh, <laughs> so hit me hit me with a follow. Uh, I'm usually pretty good about getting back to direct messages. Recently, it's been bad just because I've been so busy with stuff, moving and stuff. But anyways, um, I'd like to make it an extension of basically what I do on Instagram. So I want to do a technical review for anything related to sports performance. Um, kind of give like the 
I guess, average Joe's uh, description of what's happening in elite sports. So whether it's jumping or sprinting, I mean, I love high jump. So high jump, long jump, throwing, golfing, I don't even know. I mean, it, it'll extend to all of those. I don't even know that. Also, That's really cool. I thought you were going to stick to jumping, but it's going to be all encompassing pretty much. Yeah, I want to do all of it. Yeah, I don't. I don't like to be, you know, one trick pony. I don't Definitely, want to dude. I was. I was gonna say that before I asked the question. I didn't want to have like a loaded question to say like, is your YouTube gonna be like, like just jumping or what? Like what? What? Because when this is what I wanted to say is that when you start a YouTube, like for me is for, especially is that like you start a YouTube with a couple ideas, but as you grow, you you want to branch out and you have a lot of ideas. So I didn't want you to just say your main idea because <laughs> I know as you start YouTube, you'll have a ton of ideas. Yeah, I mean, I think coming back from a lot of injuries that I myself have uh had basically so three herniated discs torn labrum torn patella plantar fasciitis uh partially torn patella like all that stuff is just like you know you if you can come back from a lot of those injuries without surgical intervention and get back to training right. um you know i think that would be a cool part of it but i think i want the focus of it to be on the sports science aspect on the training aspect biomechanics a lot of the stuff that i think is kind of maybe like maybe oversimplified or a lot of assumptions are made. That's probably like one of my biggest pet peeves is when people just make assumptions without like having good evidence to back it up. And I think that's why like we get a lot of the same type of stuff on YouTube when it comes to jumping. Like it's hard to find fresh new content because everyone that posts on YouTube is getting their information from YouTube. Not everyone, but a lot of people are. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, and I think like it's really hard to get the perspective of a biomechanist because if there was that perspective like a true biomechanist which i technically am not because i don't have a phd but i've worked for one for numerous years um but are it's, you, it's hard gonna, to get that are you going to go towards that still the phd uh maybe there's no I'm, I'm leaning towards physician assistant um i think that there's it would be awesome to to have a, a phd but one of the things that for me i've realized is really important is balance so you know having a balance of being able to do something during the day that is not my passion. Um, just right. because when your passion becomes work, then it's no longer your passion, it's work. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was like a really fine line or like something that I really struggled with because I would always have a tendency to just dive into it, you know, head on and then it, it consumed my life and then it became work and then it was just, it wasn't necessarily what I wanted. So I want a better balance. Um, I also think it's going to be more conducive to like, having a family and stuff like yeah. that someday, which is really what I want to do, um, was a major priority. So if you're a single lady age 22 to 24 and you're listening, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Yo, so anyway, back to the Instagram and the, I want to get to what your passion is, but I just want to give a quick background is that when you, you kind of came on the dunk scene, the way I see it, cause I'm always on the dunk Instagram sort of yeah. and like you were always, um, it seemed very passionate about jumping and you were very helpful. I reached out to you and you helped me with my own jump mechanics. You helped me realize one big part that I wanted to mention was the slow and controlled jumping. Because like for me, you helped me break down my specific jump form. And I thought that was really cool. Like, Because I've always known that I run fast because people are like, why are you sprinting towards the rim? And I watch other people not go nearly as fast. And that's always how I've jumped. So a big change for me was knowing that I can go slower. <laughs> I feel like yeah. uh, Ricky Bobby was telling me, I just want to go fast. I just want to go fast. <laughs> but yeah. So I'm like, going fast. Yeah. yeah Not only that, like it's good jumping form, but also like the kind of science behind it. Like you mentioned, like the physics, actual physics of like the slow jump that I'm having optimal speed and going through that. So um, do you have a passion for jumping or just sports science or what What would you say? Like oh, what man, gets jumping. you most excited? Freaking jumping. Yes, yeah, go. Yeah, I love it. I love high jump. I mean, I, I grew up basically playing basketball and wanting to dunk because I thought that was the coolest thing you could do in basketball, as most of the people listening to this. Yeah. And basically, like, I didn't even care about any part of my game. Like, I just thought the dunking was the coolest thing. So I started high jumping to dunk mm -hmm. and ended up in seventh grade touching rim. And then eighth grade, I, I dunked at the end of the year. But I was like a really decent high jumper for a middle schooler. You can so actually so How tall were you in eighth grade when you dunked? Uh, I was five. 510 so there's off a video one? of me actually, yeah off one there's That's a video cool, of me high jumping. if you type in 510 eighth grade high jump like you'll see the video of me high jumping and it's like like i look like a like a little pipsqueak but anyways put your name on that title so it's easy to find <laughs> too, for real I John Evans, eighth yeah. Grade. yeah i mean i was really good for a middle schooler That's i mean awesome. now kids kids blow it out of the water especially like in yeah. europe like people are way better at high jump but that's like a whole nother conversation but i love jumping i think i love high jump 
because it's more complex in some elements of it. Like there's more to it than just jumping high. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love dunking because it's just fun, man. It's like an adrenaline rush. There's nothing quite like it. I mean, for me, I, I just do simple stuff. I just jump high and throw down one handers and two handers. Like I don't want to do much else than that's, that. But that's really awesome. So when you when you like started your Instagram, did you have any idea of like the dunking community, or did you see the dunking community and then start it? Like how did that work? No, I didn't even know there was a dunking community. I think maybe a little bit. Like, I think I started following a couple guys. Like, I followed I – didn't, I didn't really know about the community as much. Like, I didn't know that the, all those guys were in Orlando and everyone mm-hmm. dunked together until I found your channel and basic – or CJ's. Yours and CJ's channel because I was like, dude, who are all these guys that are – YouTube on Instagram? Uh, YouTube. Oh, was on cool, YouTube. cool. And I was basically like, who are all these guys that just, like, dunk. <laughs> go and, and, like, all dunk together? Yeah. Like, what is this? And then I started – I came across, like, Nico's, mm-hmm. um, Peter's. Uh, Peter Olson, for those that, that don't know, Nico Christie. And then I think maybe followed – I didn't even follow Isaiah or CJ, which is kind of funny That's now, hilarious. like, thinking yeah. about it. Um, <clears throat> maybe you – oh, we got we got Tiny Dog. Yeah. <laughs> Young Doggy. Uh, anyways, so – I think that's how it started, but I was mostly in track because I was working at Altus, uh, which is a track and field group with Olympians. And basically they were like, yo, like I was talking to one of them and they were basically like, Hey, you could blow up your social media and you could make money on it when you leave if you want, which was always a goal of mine. Mm -hmm. Um, so they gave me a bunch of advice on it and that's kind of how it started just filming them and posting videos. But I I mean, I knew a lot about it. I just didn't talk about that. I just posted the videos and then a couple of them got reposted on jumpers world. I don't know if you know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, and then that grew my following a lot. Like, I got reposted by Altus because I knew the social media guy really well because um, I helped him with a lot of stuff as an intern. Um, but I obviously was really passionate about that stuff. It just it happened to blow up my social media a little bit. So then, I don't know, I got more into it a little bit and kind of just kept growing it, just posting training stuff. And then I am I got more into dunking, met Austin, Austin Bork, Berkey, shout mm-hmm. out Berkey. And uh, he basically got me connected with Isaiah. And then Isaiah got me connected with, basically all those other guys because i remember reaching out to like nico and peter and like because peter had knee problems and i was like yo dude you gotta fix your yeah. knee problems like what's up which at the time i wasn't even like fully sure as much as i am now on how to fix that but anyways that's how it started um how i started growing social media now i love the community speaking at dunk camp was sick getting to meet everyone yeah. especially like you jay clark that was fun i love that that's yeah. great you should go you guys dude, should go shout out dunk camp. Speaking <laughs> of dunk camp it was really awesome like seeing you speak and stuff like that because i've i've like we've talked a lot we've had a lot of phone calls and stuff like that but i've never seen you like put a presentation together and talk like that and it was really cool and i was very intrigued and also like i just want to know a little bit more detail about like what have you studied because you've studied jumping and like sports right yeah. So, I mean, I've basically been obsessed with jumping since I was, I mean, most people, once again, mm-hmm. like I was third, uh, probably younger than that, like 12. So seventh grade, going to seventh grade, I just wanted to jump. I just wanted to be able to grab rim and then I wanted to be able to dunk and then et cetera. So I just became obsessed with getting better at it and came across, I think the first program I did was jump manual. That was maybe the first one that I ever did. Cause I was super Same. skeptical. Yeah, yeah, I think we mentioned yeah I was like here. super, super skeptical. Yeah. Um, so then like even that was like really poorly written. It was weird. I don't I don't know how to explain it. Like there were like grammatical errors everywhere. It was weird. <laughs> anyway, so I like started doing that one and actually that got me way better just mm-hmm. because I think I was developing like I was hitting puberty. Right. And then I and then I did um I did one called Power Plyometrics by Jim Radcliffe who's mm. the strength coach at Oregon and I read that book when I was 14 and that book like skyrocketed me ahead of like all my peers my wow. age because it went over like all of the physiology of jumping, like, like everything, biomechanics, physiology, all of that together. And I read it and just studied all those terms, like the stress shortening cycle, elasticity, all these like high level tendon stuff that like was really interesting to me. So I did that progression and that's where my bounce like went through the roof. Like wow. I got way faster. I was way better off on foot. I got really elastic and then got really good at track because of that. So I ended up like kind of gravitating towards track more than basketball because dunking wasn't really established. And then yeah. From there, I just studied it a ton, just read every article I could read, like research articles and stuff, like when I was in high school, um, just like tons and tons of stuff, basically, mostly from a guy named Mike Young, who I used to work for, recently just kind of made the transition back home and kind of transitioning to PA school. But he was like, I mean, even to this day, he's easily the best coach I've ever met. He works at LSU and PhD in biomechanics, like his resume is insane. Um, so like, after working with or after reading all of his stuff, like I was like, I want this guy to coach me. So when he coached me, it was like being mentored by like the highest level coach that like you could be mentored by in the country. Um, like he wrote the curriculum for what the governing body of track and field is like, he's just a genius anyway. So 
um after that experience i became like kind of freaky athletic like really really strong really powerful at 17 years old i was just really athletic because of that um so then i just loved it and i was like i want to do this for the rest of my life um so i was already obsessed with it really got obsessed with it like especially training like, i quick. love training not yeah, yeah, exactly right. that's exactly what i was going to ask you was your obsession like you wanted to start like kind of sharing that and training people or did you just want to get the best you could be first Dude, honestly, it was it was like I love the idea of becoming Superman. Just like yeah. like CrossFit says, like building Batman, and that's what I felt like. I was yeah. just like, I want to be super soldiers. Like I am not genetically gifted, but mm-hmm. like I made myself like freak zone, and I was like, that was always my dream. And mm-hmm. I was like, man, if people just knew what to do, and they just like people way more gifted than me knew what to do, they would be just so freaky. Um, so like once I kind of figured that out, you know, I was like, oh, I want to share this with everyone. I want to know everything about it. I want to know like, what's the best way to get better. Yes. So I think Mike basically like track and field is a sport of maxing out jumping and sprinting. You know what I mean? Which is like, mm-hmm. if you want to dunk and you have a vertical of 50 inches, you're going to be all right. So, uh, which by the way, I don't know if anyone has a legit 50 inch vertical, Jacob about, Tucker, he hit Jacob Tucker. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, but anyway, so once I kind of like, figured that out i like wanted to share with everyone i like loved it it was something i was really passionate about and i knew a lot about i was like way ahead so i went into college basically with the training knowledge of someone that like even now like some people don't have the knowledge that i had when i was in high school which sounds arrogant but like i just had such good mentors Mm -hmm. um so then like went to school was like a joke because i like was being mentored by a phd for like two years while i coached me um and like reading all this research and stuff that you don't even do till grad school Mm -hmm. so like those three, I graduated in three years. It was like a joke, basically. Did an internship in football, which was good. Um, was on the track team for a little bit. Won't go into that too much, but basically, I just like didn't work out. And then um, I had like some injuries and stuff, so I couldn't compete. Uh, and then got into weightlifting. Did an internship at Athletic Lab with Mike. Did a second internship with Mike. Did an internship at Altus. Did an internship with the Olympic training site. We're kind of like shadowed there. I just like lifted with the guys and like got to know everyone. Got to know the coach really well, and we just talked training all the time. Uh, volunteer assistant coach for two, uh, two years on a track team was a head coach for a high school track team. And basically the whole time was just like reading and educating myself as much as possible. But I don't want to go into too much of that stuff, but basically that's, that's awesome, my story. Man. I could go on and on and on. There's yeah, like, for sure. it, um, so what are your like ultimate goals when it comes to training? Do you like, cause I know you're training Isaiah, you're kind of training Austin. I think Nico's well, right. Yeah. We're just kind of helping yeah, him out. Well, so I would say like, it's kind of a, a weird thing because I just, I started because I was so passionate about it and I was really curious. I was like, how do these guys get their vertical up so high? You know, like, I feel like my training is really intelligent. Like, what are they doing? Yeah. Um, and after like working with the Olympians and stuff, like one thing became really, really clear. And that was, if you want to get really good at something, you just do it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, especially with you guys, uh, all the Florida guys, and especially like, you know, working with those Olympians, you realize like the thing that made these guys so good is that they just were consistent. They just consistently did it year after year after year after year um, and got better and better and better just progressively. It didn't happen overnight. It's just you get a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. Um, and one of my buddies who went to the Olympic trials said the same thing. He's like, you just put in work year after year and stay consistent. You'll get better. So uh, with myself, my goal was just high jump six, six. That's all I wanted to do. Lifetime seven foot. Mm-hmm. That was my ultimate goal. But uh, it was, there's a lot of other variables that go into that other than your vertical. Um, and then my other goal was to just get like a, basically get my head of the rim was the only other goal I had, um, in terms Ooh. of jumping. So Are you yeah, that was it. Those? I know you're, I know you're, I mean, as long right as I now, can but... get healthy, I, I mean, I love jumping, like I love dunking, but I think like that for me to do that, I, like there would have to be a lot of other things that change. I probably switched to two foot, but I'd have to like get my hip surgery. Gang, gang. Like, yeah, I know. Right. I'd have to do, cause I think two foot, two foot is better in terms of like, it's trainability. It's more mm-hmm. trainable, I think. And if you get really good, technically you can jump really high. Okay, so I want to get more into that, but I follow up question on the train on the, like the goals. Do you have like yeah. training goals or like, uh, like career wise goals of like, do you want to train people? Do oh, you have your own oh business? yeah. So right now, yeah, definitely want to do my own business. I'm currently starting that right now. trying to get the LLC together, working with Jonathan Clark. Which All about gonna- jump training, take- right? Yeah. So basically, I mean, it'll be, it'll be like for jumpers knee and like tenant issues. Um, it's, it is going to be all about jumping and there is maybe going to be a sprint program. Um, because there's so many elements of jump training and depending on where you are, like if you're overweight, the best way for you to jump higher is going to be to lose weight. So like, Mm -hmm. to me, it's like, it's a no brainer. Like Mm -hmm. if you want to jump high, you need to be lean. So maybe the first thing you need to do is just lose weight. Should I make a program for that? No one's doing that right now, but like, it's important. Or if you're a basketball player, like you're probably putting up hundreds of shots a day, 
you're playing for hours a day. So like the best thing for you to do is maybe rest. So I want to write up like a brief description of like, Hey, this is what you should do as a basketball player, not even training, just do these things to jump higher. Um, and then like the specific stuff would be if it's just jump training and stuff, I basically want to do, and this is like not secretive, but basically I want to do it based off deficits, which I'm not really going to go into unless you ask about it. But basically it means if you, so for example, like when you're in the weight room and you're like, dude, I feel so flat. Um, what do you, you mean know, like, like you're just like, I can't jump high. Like okay. I just feel like heavy, you know, mm-hmm. like I can't really get off the ground. I don't feel bouncy. I don't feel quick. Um, what happens is in the force velocity curve, you basically have, which I'm not going to go into once again, but there's basically a gap in your muscles ability to produce force. So like being able to address that gap is oftentimes what makes people really, really good. So, uh, depending on how you jump, depending on if you're one foot or two foot, uh, you know, I kind of want to create a program for, for all those different things, mm-hmm. uh, 30 day programs that kind of like chunk. So it's like, you start here. If the, if you're overweight, the first thing you gotta do is lose weight. And then if you're weak, the next way to get your vertical ups is just get stronger. And then if you, after you get stronger, the next way is to work on elasticity. And then like, so it's like 30 day blocks or whatever. And like, you just pay for the 30 days or whatever, do that program mostly because most people can't focus on a 90 day training plan for them to just do 30 days, unload, jump high. Uh, stuff like that, I think is really good. So that's a big goal of mine. I would love to, for dunking to take off and kind of be like at the forefront of coaching it one-on-one. Cause I don't think really anyone's doing that. Um, but in terms of what I'm doing right now, uh, I did, I've done like consulting for Jonathan, obviously like on the double East Bay, uh, and stuff like that, trying to help him with, cause you've done it. You just showed him how to do it, right? I just did it, bro. I just was, <laughs> hey, I was like, I was like, yo, put the, put the rim up to 11 foot. Give me yep. two balls. I'll do a, I'll do a quadruple <laughs> East Bay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> dude, I'll double dunk it. Hands be dude. Cause you're not too bro. It was, it was nuts. <laughs> so, uh, so basically like working with him and then Austin getting his, uh, vertical up a lot. He's had a lot of other stuff going, but helping him out. Um, he's gotten way better off two foot and one foot. And it was weird. Like it wasn't cause he doesn't post a lot. So like you can't yeah. see his progress. But he's gotten way better. Um, with Nico, it was after Austin. He saw Austin get better. He reached out to me. Um, so I've been mostly consulting for him because Nico got hurt and all that stuff. Like he's just been hurt periodically. Um, so that's been part of it. Then the two big ones I'd say that like I'm pretty consistent. Like Isaiah was a massive one because Isaiah's knees were so bad he like couldn't jump. And mm-hmm. so like Austin was like, "Listen, dude, this guy can help you out if you let him." You know. And so basically like. We're going to get into that. Him. I want to, I want to not to cut you off. We'll dive into that. Yeah. I want to get into knee pain. Cause I, that's like the biggest question I always get. But first I want to just give you some credit because what I really like about you and when I see you on like social media and how, when I, my first impression of you too, is that you had all this knowledge, but you were talking to us as like, you like to say case studies. And I think oh. that's <laughs> extremely helpful. And just like a learning process in all aspects is that you learn from people who are doing it but you're also kind of just like gathering information. And I thought it was really cool that you were just trying to like learn everybody's different stories just to kind of see what's similar and just things like that, because you don't see, I don't see anybody else doing that, especially like in in the coaching realm. Like I see my friends doing that, like all the dunk guys, we all share what we've learned and what we try to do. And I like what, for me, like I've had so much trouble with off dribble dunks. I've talked to all my friends about that, but like you as like somebody who wants to do the training aspect, like I like to train, but I'm still trying to figure it out myself. So for you, even though you had all the knowledge, it was, it was cool to see that you were like looking to us and not even like for answers, but just like, you don't know what we did. You don't know what our training methods is. So you want to see like, if like your theories works, whatever worked, I just thought that was super cool. So yeah. yay. Um, no, dude, yay, I did it. <laughs> so um, No, I mean, I'm super interested in that. Like, I think, like, it's really hard to figure out. You can't really do research training studies. So, like, yeah. they're just super hard. And, like, I love research. I love evidence. I, like, I, I'm all about it. I think it's objective and it's the best way to make decisions. But, like, when you get really into the nitty gritty, I think it's really important to just find commonalities and basically, like, say, hey, what is it that really let these guys all jump really high, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like, there's a couple things that I noticed. One is technique. Uh, everyone that jumps really high has great technique. Mm-hmm. Um, two, it was what goes into that technique basically. Right. So like, how is it that they jump high in terms of the physics of it? Like what are they doing? And then the, the physiology of it. So what in the muscles lets them use their technique and maximize it. And how do we maximize that? Um, and then, oh wait, dude, I definitely got tangential. But the last thing was that Hi. people jump a lot. People jump a lot. That was like the, the big things that I realized, like, well, I guess it was like the two things that let people jump high is they jump a lot and they have really good technique. Yes. And then the things that I was interested in was like, how does that happen? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So 
once I really started to look at that across the board, that was like the biggest thing. Like Chris, Isaiah, when I say Chris, I mean CJ, CJ champion, CJ, uh, John. Yeah, exactly. Isaiah, Austin, you like people that have 40 plus inch verticals, like, like truly 40 plus inch verticals. How do they, what are they doing? Because no offense, like you guys aren't division one football players. You know what I mean? Like, like you maybe weren't given the same genetic milieu, but you guys maxed out and killed those guys in terms of running verticals. And I was like, well, how is it possible that this guy who runs a four two and this guy who runs a, a four eight yeah. have this guy with the four eight has a way higher vertical because mm-hmm. everything in physiology says the uh, the super fast guy should run w- jump way mm-hmm. higher, but he doesn't. So that was like where my curiosity I was like, how do you put these things together? I don't understand All it. Right, I'm gonna get back to uh, that so yeah. um that those like three things you said the jump technique, but real quick, let's go back to knee pain real quick. What have you seen as like sure. common causes of knee pain, and then some just basic things to rehab it that's all i want to say not too much into it but basically like right. common causes yeah, for dunkers over talk, i could go on and no on. that's fine it's plenty but i just want to like i go off to the time too and we both do the same thing so yeah yeah so i'll try to try to keep it focused if i get off track uh definitely yeah, help me. so things see, we got things all the time in the world cause, so things that cause any pain and then what was the other one what was the other question basically just how to fix it okay how to fix it yeah, yeah. well i can't go into too too much detail because that's yeah. also appropriate i guess i can yeah, sure. but I'll like you can give a teaser. Into, like, I'll give a teaser. Uh, well, so, here, here you go. You don't have to give the actual exercises, but kind of give like the science behind what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's good. I love yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll teach you how to fish. I won't tell you. I won't give you a fish. Anyway, so the first one uh, would be what causes it. Anytime you have jumper's knee, if it's actually jumper's knee, most times people have knee pain. How do you diagnose not- it as well? Sorry. Okay, how do you <laughs> diagnose it? So if it is actually jumper's knee, what it is, jumper's knee is just a vague term, but the the things that when you feel knee pain basically the first thing you have to say is where is it right so is it above my kneecap is it below my kneecap or is it on the sides or is it underneath okay so like where's the pain at um jumper's knee is commonly two places the quad tendon and the patellar tendon um now the most common one probably being the patella um what i oftentimes see is really short guys get quadricep tendonitis um and i haven't fully figured out why that is but guys like nico kyle uh there's another guy that i work with as a bobsledder uh that had it a little bit um actually his is more patella but just i noticed like guys with that sort of build commonly get quadricep uh tendonitis Mm -hmm. like people that squat a lot um really really heavy squatters really good deadlifters tends to be the the quadricep tendon so above the the kneecap um and then if it's just pain basically so and then the other one's below the kneecap and that's patellar tendonitis. So tendonitis is a vague term and it's a continuum, but, uh, how you, do, how you know you have it is does your knee hurt when you do springy activities, right? So like, that's one way you can tell, does your knee hurt in the morning when you wake up and you're walking downstairs, um, or when you palpate it. So basically you push on it, does it hurt? Um, those are other ways that you can tell like, Hey, something's not right. Um, and it's usually just caused by too much stress on the tendon. So the, capability of your tendon to bear load is being exceeded over and over and over and over again. And it pushes the tendon down a continuum towards, uh, less function, more pain and less of a a structure basically. So I, I became really interested in this obviously because I had it really bad. Um, and I wanted to fix it and I didn't know how, and no one was telling me how, and I was getting really frustrated and I was like, how can I train to get my knee better? This is pissing me off. I just want to jump. Um, so that's, that's kind of how you know you have it. That's what it is. So in terms of fixing it, you have to, the biggest issue with getting it is you're just jumping too much. So like you're just doing too much. You're overloading the tendon too much, whether it's walking or jumping, Mm -hmm. or maybe you're like sitting in a car too long. The tension's on the tendon is under tension for too long. That's the biggest issue or it's just too much force. Mm -hmm. So going through the tendon. Uh, So you have to remove that first. That's the first thing you got to do is take away the thing that hurts. Stop doing the thing that's bothering you because at this point, especially if you're waking up the next morning and you have pain, you're really moving down that continuum fast and you're going to kind of shoot yourself in the foot long term. So stop doing the thing that's hurting because it's like you're overdoing it. If it's hurting, that means you're exceeding your capacity to do whatever you're doing. Jumping is like so intense and people don't realize that. So then the next thing that you want to do is you want to reload it and you have to progressively do that. Your tenon is basically a spring, right? So, um, you want to progressively reload that spring to get it to add function and get rid of pain. Those are the two big goals that I personally try to achieve as a coach that I'm always looking to do is, okay, the first thing, let's stop doing the thing you're doing. Let's get this pain to go away. And then let's build you back up, right? Let's start at the bottom 
and let's take steps to get you pain free and stay pain free. So what if they're in really bad? So in worst cases, like they're at a 10 pain, barely walking. If they cut out the activity that causes that, they should at least have some pain subside, right? And then they could kind of yeah. start reloading because like to, to me, it sounds yeah. like what, someone's like, what if my pain doesn't go away? How do I start reloading? But they should have at least some subside subsiding yeah pain. so the so the pain will there's two ways that i get pain to go away right because tendinop it's actually tendinopathy but jumper's knee is tendinitis um is it's it's a continuum so the first stage early onset is tendinitis meaning there's a little bit of inflammation so early on let's say you're new to jumping you start jumping your knee might hurt a little bit um that's probably tendinitis and then as you progress down um the continuum it goes from what's called reactive tendinitis to uh disrepair, tendon disrepair, which basically means it's farther down the continuum. Now you actually have the tendon change structures. And then you go even farther down to the, the continuum to degeneration, meaning the tendon ha- can't bear load anymore. So uh, when you when you early onset, you might have tendonitis. If you're jumping through it, you might move down to, to disrepair, which is kind of worse. breaking down the tendon. Yeah, worse. And then degenerative tendonitis or tendinopathy is like the worstest. Yeah. <laughs> so once you're in that one, it actually can't go back. You actually can't go back up the continuum. Um, and it's not like the whole tendon is like that. It's kind of like, like only pieces of it are, you know what I mean? If it was a puzzle, if your tendon was a puzzle, it'd be like certain pieces of the puzzle would be damaged like okay. that, but it can still, it's really strong. So usually that's what's causing the pain, but your tendon can still bear load. Mm-hmm. Um, so when to get the pain to go down, you stop doing the thing you were doing, it'll go down mostly. Okay. And then the next step that I tell people is to do what's called isometrics. And I've talked about this a lot before. Um, most of it's done by Jill cook. And this is probably the easiest way to tell if you actually have a tendonitis or tendinopathy. Um, and that is basically doing like, a like a hold where you like, I typically have people put a kettlebell on their foot and then just lift their leg and do like, like extend their leg, uh, lift their foot up and then just hold it for 45 it's seconds. It's like and, flexing the knee, right? Uh, it would be sort of like, but just, but that's what it kind of feels like is that you're kind of like. Like straightening your leg. It feels like straightening your leg. Okay, like yeah. if you lock out your knee, like if you yeah. were to lock out your leg, that's exactly what it is. You just like lock out your leg and then hold the weight. Um, yeah. So typically if you do that, like by the fifth or third set, the pain level should go down. So if you were like a six, it should cut in half. It should go down to like a three. Um, if it's really bad. And so like, there's a lot of research for why that happens and I'm not really going to go into it too yeah. much, but that's like the first step to getting people to, to go down. And this is well backed in evidence. Like a lot of people say roll massage the tendon. Like the things that I say don't work honestly, like in research and this is validated is like any voodoo magic stuff that like sounds too easy. is yeah. probably not going to work. Is, like yeah. reloading the tendon, it's called a load management program is the, in my opinion, the only way to get the tendon to be truly healthy again. Um, I know you have a really interesting story with what you did. And but, yeah, I kinda... the thing about my story is that I think I was doing the load management, but it just like the last little bit of it happened to be diet, which was the wheat and gluten. Cause it, it was just inflammation. And I was like, I was kind of doing isometrics. I think but I didn't even realize it. I was doing like yeah. the rectus femoris stretch and holding it. And yeah. I mean, that might've done when it. <laughs> I was doing it because when I would do it, I would stretch it. And then the second I was done, it would feel good. And then if I would like wait a little bit, it would kind of come back a little bit. But like mm-hmm. doing that stretch immediately would like get the pain super low. It just wouldn't go away. And then it kind yeah. of felt like there was just like a little damage there. Anyway, so lastly, you do the load management pro- program and then you you gen- you gradually get back to your activity, right? Yeah. So you just want to progressively load the tendon. So it's like a spring, like I said. So like an extension spring, basically meaning like the springs that like you can pull apart and they pull back together, kind of like a slinky, but like stiffer. Um, so like the first thing you want to do is you just hold the spring at the same tension basically. Right. And then like, then what you do is you progressively add in where the, where the spring is like slowly extending and contracting. Right. And so then eventually like it'd be like, maybe like light jumps, like slow jumps. No, that would even be too fast. So that's okay. like the spring really fast. So basically like you want to really slowly like squ- move body squats or something. Yeah. Yeah. But like slow so that you don't get the spring. The gotcha. need to be spring. And then like progressively adding back in the jumping and how you do that is really tricky because you have to cycle training and stuff. And that's kind of where I'll stop. Cause like yeah, that would make me not potentially be able to pay for school. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know that was really like, good. That was exactly like, what I was looking like, for. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you want to, you want to progressively reload it. That's the biggest principle is like, you get it pain free and then you progressively work back. Well, and if you this, do it right, it would, this will be on like, your YouTube as well, right? Uh, yeah, I'll definitely be going over like these principles and stuff for sure. But like I said, I don't 
Not like it's really not. tough. You know what I mean? Cause like, it's like on, honestly, like the goal of why I want to do the YouTube is one, obviously to help people to, to continue to put out great content, but mm-hmm. two, like I have a good product and I want to help people, but dude, like I can't you invest hours. hours. Yeah. Like I got to live too. I got to like buy yeah. food. Honestly, like <laughs> I feel you, bro. Well, people don't know the grind. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. Um, so that's, that's why I don't want to like go too much into it, perfect. but um, it worked really, really well with Isaiah. So I don't know if you maybe want me to talk about that, but it, it was kind of like, he was so bad. Like, I mean, you were, I mean, you remember, I mean, how bad was he? I wasn't there. You would know better. Um, he just told me he couldn't go dunking, which is like a big one. Like he couldn't jump. He couldn't even, he couldn't jump. And that's a huge one. Cause usually it's like, no matter what you're, you find some kind of jump, even if you're like hurts, you're still able to jump through it, but it was just like too bad and just put yeah. it downhill. Yeah. So he would just like, he told me, he's like, I, my knees are really bad. Like I did all this dunking for, I think power aid maybe, or I don't remember what it was, but he was doing a ton of dunking and like, I was like, yo dude, you gotta stop. So eventually like he finished up, I think it was like in maybe like December. I don't, I don't remember exactly. Um, but he finally finished up with power aid and I was basically like, all right, like we got to get you back on track. Um, at this time I would kind of finished up, uh, solidifying everything that I knew about tendons and really like feeling confident, um, in what I knew, um, after reading all the research and compiling it and finding the best way to get it better. Uh, that wasn't just BS, you know what I mean? Just like, like validated by objective research over and over and over again and, t- and tested basically. So then I was like, all right, like, let's get you back. We're going to start with, you know, these isometrics, we're going to get you pain free. And then once you get people pain free, you know, they think they're ready to go back to jumping, but they're not because they've yeah. missed so much of that puzzle. All they're able to do is like, the spring is just able to hold itself. That doesn't mean it's ready That's to it. store and release energy. So, you know, I got him pain free. And I just told him like, hold up, like, you're not ready yet. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So He's like, this is usually where I would jump. And I'm like, yeah, don't do that. It's just going to come right back. So you got to really go through the steps. You can't, you have to be really patient. So took him through, like I said, like getting that spring to be able to store and release energy slowly, get his muscles stronger, get the pain to go away some more and just progressively add layers to that. You know what I mean? Just add yeah. steps, add blocks until, you know, he's just climbing right out of the, hey. the frame here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so like, gone, dude, out the gym. Exactly. So he was out the gym until his head was over the rim. And then him jumping higher, I think was like like with with someone like that the goal is not necessarily to make them jump higher it's just to get them back to jumping uh mm-hmm. pain free because if you're jumping pain free you're you're going to be able to jump more consistently and that's ultimately what's going to let you jump higher like i said the biggest thing seeing you guys all jump high was just being able to jump you yeah. know what i mean like without pain so did that for him and that was kind of like the success story you know and and for him it was more of a teaching thing too an education because he was so interested in it, and I think Isaiah probably wants to coach and wants to do that. Yeah, he's, he's doing a lot very, of. He's very yeah. much a student of the jumping as well. He loves yeah, the, every yeah. detail. Yep, and I think like being able to kind of mentor him through that process and basically say, "Hey, like this is what the evidence says. I know you love science. You're an exercise science. You're a student of this. You know, let me kind of let me take you and skyrocket you to the top, so yeah. that you don't have to go through all the stuff that I went through. You know, and I can just share this with you and get you healthy, and you can help other people. Um, so it was that example of like teach a man to fish. So. That's what I did with Isaiah. And then once he got healthy and, and he could jump consistently, you know, even if it was just 10 jumps, he was able. Awesome, I mean, you yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's doing great now. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to move. And I'm working with the... Chris, the other one. CJ. Yes. CJ. Awesome, CJ's yeah. got to kill it in China, man. CJ kill it on it. August 18th, man. <laughs> yes. Um, Getting him healthy was big too. But anyways, go ahead. The next thing I wanted to bring up was jump technique. And pretty much uh, just going to let you run off with that one. But I was going to say yeah. either – let's talk about either – well, one and two foot obviously. But I was thinking maybe we should go with like what is basic technique. Like for everybody should know like the basics. But, or And also you can mix it in with this is um, what are common mistakes you see a lot in like one foot or two foot. Okay. So I would say most of this is uh, adapted from what we know about high jump. Mm-hmm. So one foot. And adapting it to two foot because there's really not a lot of research on that mm-hmm. and obviously i'm a nerd about that so i've applied all the principles of one foot to two foot and just by observing a lot of jumps you kind of see consistencies and you're able to kind of make some assumptions that are probably backed by research that mm-hmm. hasn't been done yet. so anyways um the, the biggest things with it are two things one speed and two how low your center of mass is or basically how squat squatted down like i think you you call it loading typically okay. um but like in research you just say like lowering your center of mass mm-hmm. so it doesn't matter how you lower it it's just lowering it so it doesn't matter how but it's just that's a big principle so those are the two things that let you jump high right is like 
the reason for that is twofold. One, if you're lower, you have more time to push up. So even though it, you might be weak at certain ranges of motion, if you're able to accelerate through the whole jump, then it, like in terms of physics, you're able to keep your velocity moving upwards. Then you'll have a really high takeoff velocity and you'll jump really high. Um, so lower is in terms of physics, if you can handle it is better. Uh, and then speed is the second one. So especially as a one footed jumper, um, you're always balancing those two things as being low and being fast. Like you might see guys off two foot or off, uh, sorry, two steps get really low. Like if you look at like their penultimate step, their back knee will be like two inches from the floor, like Mike or mm -hmm. Mick, Mick dunks or whatever, you know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Super low. Like one of the lowest jumpers ever, like he's super low to the ground. He looks like, it's almost like he's trying to get as low. He's trying to make as much space between the top of his head and the rim whenever he's loading up mm. for his jump. And then he just has so much time to push upwards. So, like, I know, not to cut you off, but the, as always, but, um, like, not, yeah. to, not to confuse it with the lower, the better, because it's different for people, right? And there's, like, a kind no, of balance. No, it is. So, so, it is, like, in terms of physics, you could say lower is better, right? Okay. Because that maximizes impulse. But the human body is not a perfect mechanical machine. It's not a, it's not a perfect machine, right? Yeah. So yeah. what happens in the body is if you're too low, you get out of your optimal length tension relationship. Meaning oh, okay. if this is the muscle here, right? So the muscle yes. basically shortens and extends, or uh, yeah. sorry, shortens and then lengthens, right? So like when you're at rest, your muscles like this, right? Like if you're just- uh, Fingers like, interlocked. Well, yeah, like like this is the, the muscles basically slide past each other. Okay. So this would be like, this would be fully extended. This would be like fully contracted, right? So if you flex your bicep, that's fully, fully, Damn. fully. Sh Look at that, bro. I can do it. <laughs> Let's no. go. Uh, so that's like all the way shortened. And then like halfway through, now you have like 50%. So you're right. really, really yeah. strong in that range of motion. And then like all the way out here, Look at that hyperextension. Yeah, Ooh. Anyways, that's like all the way extended. So yeah. you're not very strong at that end point. Anyways, if you are too low, the same thing happens in your quadricep. You're all the way out here. You're all the way extended. So you're not very mm. strong, right? Um, and then in the middle, you're really, really strong. And then out here, if you're not low at all, you only have this much time to like push. You know what I mean? Like yes. that's the only, the muscle can only, so, if you're here, the muscle can only shorten this much. So yes. that's why lower is not necessarily better unless you can handle it. So Jordan Kilgannon, Look at his, if you look at how much his quads are like, like his knees are over his toes, his quads are really long and he can just keep pushing all the way through his jump you um, know? or yeah. Isaiah or whoever else. So how do you know if you can handle it? I guess is my question. If you're jumping low, if you're trying to lower and you're jumping low and you have someone there watching it and they know that it's technically so it's, correct. Yeah. You just have to kind of diagnose yourself and kind of look at your form. And see I mean, unless you, unless you like get a coach, like, yeah. like I could basically like, I could look at someone's technique and be like, that's really good technique. And they might not jump higher initially. However, remember how I was talking about that length tension relationship. Mm -hmm. You can change that in terms of research. We know that it, it like it's backed. We know that we can make the muscle stronger at this end range. Like mm -hmm. it is possible to do. You can make this actually your strongest point if you want. Um, and then like really good jumpers, are able to maximize that the entire time. So they're really strong here. They're really, really, really strong here. And they're really, really, really strong at the end. Um, a good example of this is like, like cyclists. It's so like cyclists are always like bent over, you know what I mean? And like yeah. their legs only move in this like tiny range of motion. So like, that's not necessarily optimal, like ranges of motion or like for their low back and stuff or their hips, but like their hips are always in like a uh, flexion, meaning they're always long. But that yeah. what happens is that ends up becoming their strongest position. Right. So like, we know you can change the muscle properties and kind of like change how it produces force. Like it might produce more force at that end range. And that's what I think why guys like Chris Staples, uh, uh, Jordan Kilgannon, Isaiah, like Chris, that's why their best jumps, I think are, they're so, they almost look like they're like leaning back. I don't know how it's like a really weird, it's a hard thing to explain. But it's, their, their it's, it is hard to explain, over. but if you do a video like slow-mo and you pause it, like we do, it's like, you can see that same seated type position. In yeah. Those jumps off too. Yeah, their hips are like they look like their butt is like when they're when they're like planning their penultimate. It looks like their butt is like a foot from the ground. That's how you can really tell. They're just low to the ground. Like their hips are low to the ground. So, um, so basically like how you know if it's wrong is if you're not jumping very high and you're trying to lower, you're probably too low, right? So, um, there's two implications of that though. It's like if you want to ultimately be better, do you just train there until you get better, you know what I mean, and suck it up and right. suck for a while, or do you just try to max out your higher slightly higher position you know what i mean there's there's so many ways to jump high off of two feet 
you know so so what did you what would you say about some jumpers that have like they they, they don't seem to get low at all like kind of like justin darlington like just fly he just kind of oh, yeah. bounces like, <laughs> i mean they're genetic kind of an anomaly yeah i think i think those those technical models should not be followed at all because like like i said like there's so many ways to jump high but like yeah if you're talking about truly optimizing it i think you really just have to look at what we know right mm-hmm. so like i think maybe a better way of saying it would be like and I'll hear people say this about Usain Bolt and they'll be like, well, Usain Bolt doesn't do that. So why should I do that? And I'm like, oh, right. You picked like the number one genetic specimen yeah. on the planet, like the, the, the only outlier on the planet. And, and then like ignored the other like thousands and thousands of people that say otherwise, you know what I mean? Be like, right. you have an outlier. Of course he can do whatever he wants. He's a genetic freak. And that's yeah. the kind of thing with Joe, Justin, like he probably could have had better technique, but it doesn't matter because like he's six, four, super bouncy. His nervous system is like, wired insanely well and yeah. like super elastic his tendons are like super stiff super so, long for those who don't know who justin darlington is, he, he just has like a very unique jumping it's like form. A jump <laughs> he, he kind of like jumps into his plant and just kind of like it looks very unoptimal i don't even know how to explain it because it, it kind of looks like he's gonna like <laughs> suboptimal yeah exactly he looks like he's a pogo like, stick. yeah he kind of like pogo sticks into a jump and he gets super high but and it works for him so i just had that question anyway so yeah. get low and then speed so how fast speed, do you want to yeah. go how do you know if you're going too fast so with two foot there's no research like i said on the speed but um in high jump we know that the best single leg jumpers on the planet high jumpers you know they displace their their center of mass upwards of like I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it's like 110 centimeters, which is equivalent to like, well, you can divide two by 2.54 and figure it out. But anyways, it's like over 50 inches. Like it's really, really high. Um, what is that number like the- about? I missed that. So basically like, you know, we know in research how much they displace their center of mass. So I think like, oh, okay. like their standing height, it's about a meter. And then they're clearing like, they're clearing bars upwards of 235, like so, or 240. So for example, if you're standing height, it's a meter is your standing center of mass and you're jumping an additional uh, or you're jumping 240. Then you subtract those. This, the difference is your vertical jump, right? right? Or like how much your center of mass changed. Yeah. Um, not the bar clearance. Like they're actually able to measure how much it changed. I can do the math real quick. So it'd be it's like 0.95. I'll just like eyeball it here. 2.4 minus 0.95 divided by two points. I think it's what's the conversion? Two point four two or something i don't know what it is oh for inches you know and centimeters is? that sounds you know right uh, i look it up i think hey, it's like theory <laughs> are you gonna what ask inches to centimeters i think it's five four two point five four. Oh, i got it right hey. okay look so so Series this would be with it. this would be um so wait let me see uh let's see one so basically like 130 divided by thank you siri 0.54 so 51 inches that's like a elite elite high wow, jumper. okay 51.2 inches like we like have the evidence like i'm not going to go on how they measure it but that's like how high they're able to jump so um when you're looking at like people that have 52 inch verticals you're like oh well what are they doing and we know that they run eight meters per second and they lower their center of mass to about 45 percent of their standing height or 48 percent, i think is what it is so like if you want to know what's optimal I just gave it to you. Yeah. That is ideal. That is optimal in terms of physics. So how low is that? Because people probably don't know how fast that is. Yeah. Let's just put it this way. Most dunkers are not running that fast because they have a ball in their hand or they only have five steps. Like I'm to run that fast, fast, you basically, yeah, Steven runs fast. <laughs> but like, so I would basically just say like, you basically have to sprint and then most of them are probably going to want to keep their hips relatively high. Like lower won't necessarily be better. Um, it, like sometimes it is if you don't have a lot of steps. Uh, but for the majority of people, it's better to keep the hips a little higher and kind of let them lower naturally. Like when you over lowered Steven, remember when you were trying to jump off one foot when you were too low, you couldn't actually get off the ground. Yeah. Right. Like you were just like, I just need to add speed to this and just like do it. You know what I mean? Not think about it and you could jump high. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you're trying to dial that stuff in, that's where you actually need a biomechanist and it gets really dicey or you can just have someone do it by eye, but you need a trained eye, um, which is what my channel will be about. Awesome. Anyway, awesome. so, uh, and then like two foot, we don't know how fast, but I can tell you it's slower than one foot. So like you run as fast as possible and you're probably moving super fast, but I would assume it's probably around like between five and seven meters per second, which is like, that would be equivalent to like 15 second, hundred meter dash time. If like people know what that is. So it's not super fast. Um, but it's like basically What's more important in that is how low your hips are or how low your center of mass is. There's like a premium on how fast, but you, it's not like the most, most important thing, I guess, if that makes right. sense. So, um, so those are the two biggest things is speed and lowering. And then like 
one foot there's like two different strategies speed jumping and power jumping which once again is like a lot and i won't go into that but two foot your youtube probably right? in my youtube yeah. channel um and then like in in two foot jumping joel smith kind of popularized the idea that there was the same thing basically speed jumpers and power jumpers um and i think by and large that might be true um but i think that what is optimal would be what is the majority of the population of elite jumpers doing right and i think that if you look at jay clark you look at chris staples you look at um you look at isaiah you look at you you look at guys that like are consistently good, but it, like take out people like T Dub. Yeah. Take out and even him, he has good technique. But like take out people like T Dub, take out um K- Kabea, Kabaya. Mm-hmm. Dude, he like they're genetic freaks, once again. Like you can't or Justin Darlington, take those guys out of the equation because they're outliers. They could do absolutely nothing and they're still gonna jump fifty inches with totally crappy form. It doesn't matter. They're freaks. Um so like when you look at the majority of the population. I think you would, there's like consistencies within that. Um, So basically one being that they have a big penultimate step, grounding it kind of on the side of the heel. Like if this is your foot, they're grounding it there and kind of rolling. Like, do you have a callus right there on your foot? Um, Cause like a lot of people like Nico, Nico's like, like, Nico's like, yeah, I had a big blister on the side of my heel. Like kind of like, but mine's got so like, I don't know. It's, it's like, it's not my foot. It's not a callus. Yeah. It's your foot. Yeah, exactly. It's a part of your foot, but that's my point is like, so like you'll see a big push into the penultimate step. So the yeah. first, if you're right left, that would be your right foot, and then the left foot um, comes around kind of far in front of the body. Uh, and I think that like this is going to be hard to explain, but the angle of your shin is probably one of the biggest indicators. So if you like your shin bone is like your te- like like when you get kicked in the shin, right? You know where your shin is. Yeah. Right. So like. The angle of the shin into the ground gives you a very good indication of like if they have a lot of speed and if they're really low to the ground. So more vertical is bad. When they ground their heel of their right foot if they're right left. If the shin is uh, more up and down, that's where you want it. No, you, you want, want it angled. It, you want it angled yes. more. That's good. That's very good. Um, that means you're low and you're probably really fast. And this is like you're looking just to help the people diagnose themselves. If you're looking at your form, when you plant your penultimate, say your right left when you plant that right left and you're you have both feet on the ground and you're about to take off you want your shins before you jump off no, no. you're low it would be as soon as it would be as soon as your right foot touches the ground okay. what position is your shin in okay, what yeah. like as soon as your foot like the frame that your foot your heel taps and just touches the ground what angle is your shin at right and like i don't know i'm just throwing this out there it's probably around like 45 degrees or something i, I have 40, 48 just, but yeah 40 48 degrees obviously uh 40 48 yeah. degrees <laughs> uh west of the south pole um so anyways like that that's like a good starting point i guess like, yeah i don't know that's me, really like, helpful. In my head, i'm just like this like this is the angle i don't yeah. know i just know the angle when i see it um but like knowing that and then the second thing is the second plant foot so if you're right left your left foot has to come and this is hard to explain but it's internal rotation and and uh would be abduction so kind of in front of the body um and this Like, you'll see, like, a wide plant. I guess that's the only way to explain it. Like, Isaiah, I think, has a really narrow plant, and I think that's why he, like, isn't optimal. Like, he's not optimizing his technique. But, like, I think your plant's a little bit wider. Um, Ryan Garcia. Ryan has a good one, yeah. Really, really wide plant. Um, Why is that optimal? uh, Because if you bring in more speed, you're able to – you are able to vault your hips over top of that second plant. So, Mm -hmm. basically, each leg in a two-footed plant does something different. Okay, the, the, the leg that plants first, the penultimate step, is considered the pushing leg. So you're going to see that leg in a lot of knee flexion. Um, I think, wait, when you had knee problems, when you were right left? It was, was my it left because right? I did a lot of left foot, one foot. Oh, okay. But like Isaiah, for example, is left right, and his left knee gives him a lot of problems. And like that's kind of standard. I mean, it changes for everyone, but like typically if you're getting really low, that first plant, because like your knee is going to come so far over your toes, and you're going to like be really squatted down if you're a good jumper – uh that's the knee that's going to bother you more um but anyways uh the more speed that you have the more potential to take it vertically okay but think about it like pole vault right like you got to put the pole in the box to do that right so if you maybe the best way to explain this is let's see if uh, how i can explain this if you didn't and this is going to be really hard to do. <laughs> if you have a if you have a lot of momentum and you yeah. plant your foot under your hips and your shins really like and your or like your second plant is under your hips, you're not going to be able to vault your hips over top of it, right? So like 
like you're basically planting your foot like this, your hips can only move like that, right? So you're only going to like think about a catapult, right? You're yeah. only going to catapult your hips this far. But if you have a lot of speed and you plant like this, your yes. hips can catapult way up more. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, so if you think of a catapult and you're running with the catapult and you hit like the long stick, if you barely put it no, 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 at an angle. Like, like, ignore, ignore, like the, ignore, the, ignore the pole vault thing. Just think about a catapult, right? So like oh like catapult you, oh I'm thinking of like, pole you know what a catapult I mean, yeah no, now pole, I know <laughs> think about catapult like the yeah. old school like yeah 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 like, slingshot type rock. thing yeah yeah exactly so like if the catapult has a it's only lot pulled of, back a little bit it yeah would, like if it's pulled back a little bit which yeah. is now like like a slingshot which, yeah if it's pulled back a little bit it's the same thing as keeping your foot under your hip you don't have a lot of time to throw your body yes. forward right but if you have it pulled all the way back you have a lot of time to let the catapult like throw your hips over top mm -hmm. of your foot and then throw yourself forward right or right. over the top of them so that's why having the feet out in front of the body out in front of the hips is really important because if you have enough momentum it'll let you vault over yes. top of your over top of your leg right very difficult thing to explain but i, I, I know it's it really tough dude but you'll it's see like it in jumps really if you, if, but, but with like, that information like, if i wish i could explain it better but it's just really complex I'm yeah not but if you yeah but i think that knowledge is good so when you like when you see people if you try to watch people in slow motion jump with that knowledge you can kind of try to visualize now as they're planting they're on it at an angle and then they're going to be vaulting up and like the lower yeah. the better and they're yeah like basically that momentum into like upward exactly Yep. So like the key things, if I was like, okay, what do I want to see? Right. As a coach, like, what do I want to see a jumper do really well? Okay. I want to see a big push into the penultimate with a wide split. Okay. Like the, the legs look literally like a split in the air. Okay. I want to see the uh, shin really, really like low to the ground or like negative, you would call it like positive would be vertical. Negative would be, you know, not angled. like low to the ground angled. Um, and then I want to see, the last foot, the last contact way in front of the hips with slight internal rotation. Okay. That's what I would say. And I think another big thing you'll see oftentimes is you'll see the foot pivot. I think that's another thing. Like if you watch CJ jump or Ryan jump or you jump or Isaiah jump, you'll see, and I haven't posted about this, but you'll see the foot of the penultimate step pivot. It'll like twist. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I know you have a, actually like, if you let it twist too much, you'll spin and then it's bad, but yeah. Um, that's where mobility kind of comes in and like you're working on that, but yeah, shout so, out Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I just want to mention, cause from my own experience is that I was trying to go a little too fast and the way I diagnosed that, which I think I can handle that speed, some jumps, but yeah. sometimes I was going a little too fast for my own plant. And I would notice is that when I would have my big penultimate and plant, my, f I would almost just like start passing over my feet like my body would pass over my yeah. feet before i took off so it's kind yeah, of yeah so that's like that's like you're too high you don't have enough time to push yeah. right so if you run too fast then you're like the catapult like this right you can only fling like that you can yeah. just do that you just flick you know versus if you're lower and a little slower boom you can vault yourself you can throw yourself up in the air better yeah so it's like loading like i think like if kids think loading like just like load up for the jump better you'll probably yeah. jump and awesome. then like try fast and load up yeah it's awesome awesome that's dude. good stuff um any any other else? questions i'm thinking i'm thinking dude that was a long one how long how long have we been we're at uh 54 minutes and a half let's run it um, uh, that's i think that's good man. You wanna, if you want to run it that's good um i guess that's it any any yeah. wa any last thing what are your thoughts on just the dunk community and where would you like to see the dunk community or just jump knowledge in the future so I think, I think now I feel really confident in what I know. I would really like some of my thoughts to be more popular. I think that, I think that it's figured out. Mm -hmm. um, I think we probably need a little bit more evidence to, to verify that and basically say, okay, it's figured out, but now we know it's figured out. So I think I would like to see in terms of training knowledge, a lot of the ideas, and I think everyone says this, but like, I really do feel like the training that I put together is backed by science and case studies. Like, watching you guys jump, seeing what everything you do, seeing Jonathan Clark, talking to people, compiling all that information, you know, and then basically saying like, let me make sense of this with what we know about research. Okay. How do we put together the best program to make someone jump higher? Right. So I think that's something that I really want to like make popular, I guess, because it's, I think it's figured out. It's just like most people don't 
haven't been exposed to it, right. I guess. And that's why I want to start a YouTube channel is that's exposed. Awesome. Like, When's the YouTube amazing. coming now? That's how we'll end it. Dude, it, it, like I was going to do it today, but I was like, oh, I'll make a YouTube with Steven. And, like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, sometime like, soon, like in the next couple of like, days or something? Like hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Well, if, like, dude, if, it depends how much plumbing and electrician work I do tomorrow. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, if you get it up tomorrow, let me know so I could link it. So then some people who are watching this will have the link. But eventually the link yeah. will be in this video. So if you're watching this in 2025, because these videos are timeless, they are timeless. <laughs> They're timeless, baby. They're timeless. We out here. All Dude, right. pay attention when I pop off and I'm like, oh, the other thing I want to say is I yes. hope dunking. Like, like, I hope it turns into what happened with, like, Jordan going to the dunk contest. Like, I hope, like, it gets the respect it deserves at the NBA dunk contest where they're like, yes. all right, we're going to televise this full out. Like, we want to see the freakiest of freaks, the freakiest athletes on the planet. How high can they jump, you know, and, like, specialty for you know, sure. dunkers basically at the That's NBA dunk awesome. contest, but I don't think they'll ever do that because the NBA is like they'll do something. I don't, yeah, I don't know what they're gonna do. They're like, oh, they're better than us. And yeah. we're <laughs> so, lastly, are we gonna see you dunking again, dude? Yeah, I would love to do that for sure. I think they'll probably see me high jump. You'll see me high jump before I dunk again. Okay. I'm convert. This is the big thing. This is another study that I'm working on right now with my own body before I tore my labrum. Was can you convert from a power jumper to a speed jumper and Ooh. be as good as you were? as a power jumper. So in my opinion, power jumper versus speed jumper is just the technique that you decide to use. It can be teach, it can be taught, sorry. Uh, but it's just the strategy that you choose, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna jump higher that way. But I think that speed jumping is by and large way better for high jump. And I think power jumping is just like, I mean, it's probably more common in basketball, maybe easily train, more easily trainable. Um, I don't know yet. I'm trying to figure that out exactly, but so Sounds if good. you see me do anything, it's going to be can be a speed jumper and then dunk like and that. Like, yam a few for us, will you? Briz is yeah. the dude. Briz is the freaking, he's great. Oh yeah. If you go to my YouTube channel, there's dunking on there. So Let's go. yeah, there's like one, one session with like my buddy Taylor, but that's like it. So all right. All right, <laughs> all right. well, take it easy, bro. This will probably, hopefully not be the last one. We shall do this again. Thank you. Dude, so I hope much it blows up, you know, and I'm a time. Can I, can I like give you my login information for YouTube and you can post this to mine? I could if you want. I mean, that would be awesome. Yeah, dude, hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you label it with still spinning podcast at the end. I'll say still spinning podcast <laughs> with <it>. Steve <laughs> Of course, man. That's what we do. We share knowledge. We grow together, baby. The world is still spinning. That's right. I mean, it still is, definitely. All right, bro. I'll let you go. Right, we'll talk soon. Love you. See ya. Toodles. Bye bye. Toodle we took my we outro. Up. Do we hang up or is that just it? Uh, I'm going to stop recording now. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the anthem right there. Tried to make an intro, ended up making an anthem.